Uh, there's a few things I want to talk about this week. Okay. First off, how are you doing? I'm, I'm pretty tired. I've been oversleeping. It's been pretty bad. I hate myself for it. But um, yeah, I just been feel like my eyes just look like I have like these huge bags just from, I don't know if it's from stress or from sleep or just, just 2020 really. But I've been waking up too late. Somebody said that I'm I'm looking tired and I don't feel tired. It's all that G fuel. It's the G fuel. It's definitely <laughs> we're not even sponsored. Uh I don't I don't like that I that I've been drinking G fuel. <laughs> Are you addicted? Well, no, it's just coffee became way too expensive. And you have a coffee maker? Yeah. But the coffee maker at my house is the pods, and the pods are expensive. And I know you can get the reusable pods, but also take into consideration that I am lazy. So you take that, the laziness factor, and the I have to clean the reusable pods and fill them up and then wait for the coffee. And then I don't drink hot coffee. I have to drink iced coffee. So... Oh. You're so picky. I mean, why don't you just get like a carafe, like a normal person, get like a thing, a can, you know, you, you make it in the morning, you have like a giant carafe of coffee and you don't have to make it, you don't have no pods, you don't have to spend money on the pods, you know? Oh, just make one, one craft, cup, put, it, yeah. put it in the fridge and then just keep returning to it. I guess if you're going to always drink ice, like I like hot, especially during this time of year, but I don't know what your weather's like, but, um. The hot coffee keeps me going. Like it's just warm all day, just brewing in the, the machine. <laughs> you know, every every few hours I gotta I gotta go back there. Yeah, so and I and I stopped and I stopped liking the carbonation of energy drinks. It just there's there's a very high sodium in it. So when I I realized that when I drank energy drinks, I would just take a nap. And then I would wake up and I would feel better. And I don't know if that was because it was the energy drink or the nap, you know, like this video is sponsored by really tired entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. Um, well, I guess something something I wanted to talk about this week is, I don't know if you feel this way with movies and, and video games, but with all of the new games coming out, I feel like whenever I play an old video game, I get way more into it than I do new video games. Are these video games replayed or are these new to you? Well, any, okay. So for, for example, you have the uh, collection of saga that just came out on switch, which is final fantasy legend trilogy with that originally released on game boy years ago, like 93. Um, and I started playing, I've played them before when I was younger, but Playing them now, I felt like like six hours went by and I was still into it, you know? But but if I put in the new Spider-Man on PS4, an hour or two goes by and I'm like, <laughs> like sensory overload, you know? Like maybe that's what it is. Maybe all these like flashy lights and button presses and constant action in your face. I don't know. Maybe that Maybe that doesn't excite me the way that it, it should yeah, maybe, excite uh, a gamer. Well, maybe it's just advertised towards, you know, all these new kids and these kids growing up, you know, they have less patience than we do. So back in the day, um, I guess if you want to call it back in the day, I feel like games were harder. You know, there was less information about, you know, you, you enjoyed the time spent with the game. There wasn't, you didn't have to pick up your phone every five seconds. You didn't need to be entertained all the time. Mm. So all these games are very flashy trying to compete with just like, the overload of 2020, you know, like modern day overload with notifications. But back in the day, they, uh, the games were harder. I enjoyed the more complex games. There was less in your face and there was more thinking, I think, in my opinion. I think, I think without the internet, there was this more sense of discovery with, uh, with my classmates too. It's like you would play a game that everyone was playing and then you'd go to school the next day and kind of talk about it and you could lie your ass off and there was no one that could prove you wrong. Like you could say, oh, there's this one code where you can get all the girls naked or something and they just have to believe you. Um, what games are you playing? 
I really <laughs> that well that was that was Mortal Kombat three for sure. Is everyone talked about a nude code whenever every time it's gold, and there is no nude code for it, but everyone's everyone believed there was a nude code. Um, you just had and, to have the nude code, and everyone talk. said everyone would talk. We would all talk about it like we all had it, but in the back of our minds, we knew we were a bunch of liars. But you couldn't go to the internet. To prove that wrong you know there was no sources you were the source <laughs> and you just had it's to b- believe it or not i used and- to call my friends that like played games that i was playing and if they because you know I, I couldn't get past it and there was no information to look up i would call them like yo what did you do with this one part in this one part of this game you know do i have to kill this enemy do i have to what do i have to find but that's all google now i believe that something as an impact of say in Final Fantasy VII, where Aerith dies, okay, that was that was a huge thing back in the day. But when I first played that game, I thought that she was going to come back, and there was no way for me to double check. Like today, if that happened, and I thought that she, I would just go straight to the internet, Google, does Aerith come back to life, and then it'll tell me right away. But back then, when I played the game, I had to play the entire game and realize, holy shit. <laughs> she's fucking dead <laughs> <laughs> and and the reason i thought she was alive is because in the manual if you get the physical game she's like standing in front of an airship and i never saw that fmv so i was like wait if that fmv's right there uh she's gonna come back because i need to see that fmv what's an fmv dude what is full that? motion video that's that's for the uh <laughs> the old school movies. <laughs> <It's> like what? <laughs> they full don't use that video. term anymore. <laughs> yeah, that just lets you know that it was full motion. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, but okay. So when it comes to movies now, you have Netflix. You have all these streamings. There's like hundreds of movies, thousands of movies, and I'm over here eager to watch the Matrix trilogy again for the 15th time or <laughs> Armageddon. Like, like there's these movies that I could just keep watching over and over again, but I'm not watching the new 007s or, or anything like that. Like, there's, I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with me. Like, No, there's only so much room for enjoyment in one's life. You can't, you know, not everything new is appealing. You know, you grew up with a certain thing, you have a certain taste. Can't expect everything to uh, get you going. Like the old stuff you like. I want to like the new games too. And it, and it happens with kind of these games that go for a retro appeal too. I find myself a little more into them. I don't like the new games that have retro appeal. I think it's I think it's silly. You know what I mean? Like I can't I know we review a lot of them, like pixel games and things, and I I get why it's appealing, but I just feel like nowadays there's just they're all recreations of each other, you know? Hmm. Like, That's why least- you have to look at them where what are they doing different? How are they how are they taking those influences and adding in quality of life features, modernization tactics? Um back then they're like Final Fantasy Tactics is gonna be your standard for SRPGs, especially old school SRPGs. So you have to take that that Final Fantasy Tactics, but you can't just recreate it because then everyone's like, well, you're just recreating Final Fantasy Tactics. What are you gonna do differently? And and that's what sets those those apart. I feel like pixel design in general has over the years gotten way better. Um, and I'm that's sure saying a better. lot. And that's saying a lot. Because I mean, pixel artists from the 90s and Squaresoft and all those guys, like they they knew what they were doing back then. But I think that it's come a long way. And you see See, like the the developers of the Messenger, I think Sabotage is is the developer. It's it's it looks great, you know. Um, so I I do see I do see like what a average like someone who maybe only plays Fortnite can look at those games and be like, well, they're not what's so special. Like they look like my dad's game. <laughs> but you get into um you get into them a little bit and you you kind of dissect what sets them all apart, and that's kind of where you where you get these expanded series um like right now i'm playing mercenary sagas or mercenaries saga uh and by the time this post you should see the review on the site so go check it out but um but yeah and it's one of those srpgs but they do a lot like there's there's an uh, there's an auto battle function and it's not completely auto battle where it's only turn turn base but 
it, it's just that little, those little tiny added features make it a little more exciting. A little more. Is that enough? Is that enough for, for it's you? Enough for me because I'm I'm 12 hours into this game and I'm <laughs> still <laughs> I'm still loving it. Uh, yeah, I so know. yeah, I I, and and again, I ha- I I see Spider Man and I'm I'm playing Spider Man again, trying to collect all the stuff and and do all that, but I'm not as excited about it. It's a beautiful on, game, Spider Man. We've seen Spider Man before. How excited can you get over and over again? For Spider Man, I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, I'll get excited over and over again for Halo, but you know, that's Halo. Exactly, exactly. It's different. <laughs> we'll see how it performs in 2021 after that year long delay. I can't be the only one that feels this way because that's why we get all these remasters and remakes, right? Because people want the old again, but better, I guess. Well, I mean, you have to look at. Um, all the people that are like getting older playing games, older people, older generations, um, they grew up with games as they were like just getting started. So we have all our new gamers, but all the old gamers still want to like kind of enjoy what they grew up with because it's not that old and there's really nothing prior to that. You know, we're still kind of new in new age gaming. We're only like how many years, maybe what, like 40 years somewhat like in gaming somewhere, somewhere like that. Right. I say that. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, what about another 40 years? So, you have to think about it like that. Like, all the people growing up playing Fortnite will, like, want a remastered Fortnite in 20 years or something. I don't know. know? (laughs) Like, what does a remastered Fortnite will look like? I don't know. But I feel like that's where we are. We're kind of like, we made a full circle, Mm -hmm. and we have to make another. We're, you know. We're rebooting the video game game franchise. We're rebooting the whole thing. I feel like that's what we want anyway. You know, all all us uh, millennials. We just want more of the same, but different. We just want nostalgia. <laughs> we're just upset we're not uh, young gamers anymore. Yeah, trying to hold on to the uh, the nostalgia and just the adolescence of it all. You know, you beat an old game, you you shed a tear. It's like I remember the first time I beat this game. It feels good to beat a game too. Uh, I used to have a list, and I would write down what games I hundred percented. Yeah. It, I mean, it wasn't so easy on the PS2 days because you didn't have achievements and stuff to track. But I mean, now it's like you can go to the achievements and see how far away you are from the end of the game, which is usually I do. Like, well, how far, how many chapters are there? Yeah. I guess you could check, yeah. Um, Unless they're hidden. Unless a game gives you like 15 achievements and they're all hidden achievements. Oh, there's ways to, there's ways to find out. You well, now you have Google, you know. Now you have. Yeah, I guess yeah. You could go to you could go to PSN achievements or whatever, and there's always a way. There's always a way. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at with with new games and old games. And I guess extending the question off to anybody who's listening, let us know what you kind of what you think. You can email us at pr at noisypixel.net if you want. We're always down, we're always down to listen, or you can comment in the video. Either or, your choice. Speaking of comments, Mark. Yes. Todd B. <laughs> is back. He's and, hyped right now, I bet. And he's he's pretty much making our show. He's uh he's formulating a, a structure for us, and I I am nothing but grateful for his uh. So what does that mean for his comment? Are we going to read it? Yes. Why not? His Why question, not? Mark, comes in three parts. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly haven't read the whole thing. I've seen it. I got through it a little bit. You want to kick us off? Kick us off. Um, Metacritic is his first topic. It was awesome to see you as one of the only top scores for AI. I bought it based on your review and I loved every minute of it. How hard was it to get recognized by them as a reviewer? <laughs> I'm sure you have emotions about that. It was hard. It was hard. Um, typically when websites launch, they all want to fucking review Call of Duty and, yeah. and Uncharted, you know, all these games that get hundreds of reviews well metacritic doesn't want another call of duty or uncharted review you know they're an aggregator 
in the end, they're a business and they also need four reviews to create an average. So if you have these low indie games that are, that just have three reviews, where's that fourth one, you know, like, and that helps once they get that fourth one, it actually helps boost their Google SEO and they come up on top, you know? And so with, with something like Meta, Metacritic and us, it's all symbiotic. You know, we scratch their back with reviews. They scratch our back with link backs. It's all, it's all, it's all gravy, you know? And the thing is for Metacritic is they can't let everyone in because there's thousands and thousands of people that apply a year to, to get their site on there. And I can only say that how we did it was we kept our reviews straightforward, um, concise. We had conclusions. We had um, recognizable like uh, uh, writers because when we started, a bunch of us from Dual Shockers came over. So we had already established ourselves as reviewers for years prior. So, so that was a big plus. And... I remember the day that we got on Metacritic and I was on a call with the, with the guy and he let us know. And I, I cried. <laughs> it was a very, very joyful time for me. And after, after only getting on it, what, after a little after a year, I think like, um, yeah, it was more than a year. I mean, it was just consistency. I think what brought us there. Oh yeah, know? dude, we put out so many reviews and, like I see these other sites and they don't put out any reviews and I get, it's hard. I get, it's hard, but you gotta, you gotta just think about like, I don't know. Like not only does my competitive side want to be first all the time with reviews when putting them out, but also I feel like I'm doing a disservice to the developer or publisher by them giving us a review code for free and us not putting out a review until what, two, three weeks later. Not, I feel like that's, there's like a level of disrespect in that sense to our readers because they're not getting a free code. We are. So we're taking advantage of this free code that we got and just like, yeah, whatever, we'll get to it whenever, you know? Yeah. And I, and I hate that feeling, even with the smallest games that, that we reach out for, I treat them like I would a Ubisoft game. Like, Hey guys, we got to get this out. Come on. Like, where is it? You know? And, and, and I think not a lot of publications have that approach to, to reviews. They take them for granted. And I try not to, because I, I, there, there's a level of privilege that you have. Right. And I don't want that to cut our heads. Got to be hungry, you know? There's yeah. too many of us out there. With our hardware reviews, too. It's like we understand that we give these items for free, but that means that we're going to work hard to put out a, a review of the product for you. We don't work for them. They're not paying us, you know? Yeah, reali realistically, they don't even have any other plans other than seeing some written content on the website. Like, the videos are completely our decision to make, realistically. yeah. yeah. They don't. They they never asked us to make the videos, uh, even for our, do even reviews. for our even for our video game reviews. None of the publishers, none of the PR people, ask us to do a video. That's that's on us. And yeah, uh, so that's why we get on Metacritic because we're fucking badass, <laughs> and we don't. We have no excuses. We have this no excuse approach. Huh, my girlfriend broke up with me. I don't give and a now shit. I have to take three weeks off from Noisy Pixel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dog died. Fuck off. My bad review. <laughs> got I got time coronavirus. For that I don't give a shit. You got 14 days off right now. <laughs> you don't need to breathe when you're writing a review. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty badass. Next question. A bit personal, but I was young once. I graduated 2002, and DOA was the most sexualized game in America, and my girlfriend gave me so much crap. What can I say? I like Helena. Helena. This is all you, man. I got no, in I got no insight to these. <laughs> Do you think the way we view sex and sexuality in video games has changed over the years? Case in point, Cyberpunk. It's got sexy time, but we're not all on YouTube and Fox News condemning it. 
discuss. Uh, you gonna have to help me out, my man. I don't know. Um, I think we, I think sex and gaming got to a point, and we pushed it as far as we could get it, <laughs> and then that's when Sony started pushing back. It's like when the characters, when the characters started getting younger, and we started revealing more. I feel like that's when Sony was like, well, this is our platform. We're going to have to dial back on that. Um, Nintendo is taking a new approach with it where they're saying, if the ESRB says it's okay, then we're okay with it. You know, like they're going by the rating boards. Um, But I don't know. Um, is he, I mean, just asking like about sexual games developing into like now, you know, like I think I think they're becoming more sexy. Yeah, of course, if anything, because uh, I mean, that's just how society is more sexualized, like over just Internet is actually very sexualized. You know, maybe people aren't in person, but the Internet is, which is very interesting. Yeah, it's like where where you can express this fantasy and not bring it into reality, you know? Yeah, because if you actually, um, I'm pretty sure, I mean, like, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I think newer age people are having less sex, but I feel like there's more sex talk, you know? There's more open forums for it. And because it's just a popular subject. Well, the idea is, is very Japanese where any, any service you need is provided for you for a price. Uh, or for free if whatever you need is free, but it's, um, it's getting to the, it's, it's definitely getting to a point where I think we're, we're pushing it pretty far, but I think where he's coming from is more of a mainstream because there's, there's hentai games all over the place, but I think people are mad about like the sex scene in last of us part two. There's a sex scene there. Now, with that scene showing boobs, and then you have like an anime game that doesn't show boobs but shows like like sexy material. What's the difference? Well, the difference is is that they say that this anime girl is sixteen years old. Like, yeah, like that's the <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> that's the that's the difference. And do I like Sen? I love Senor and Kagura. Okay, but even I could admit that. The, I tried to uh, close my eyes to the age of. <laughs> the age of <laughs> <laughs> Gotta remain as a fair review. Fair yeah. review. Um, so, I mean, I, it's. Dead or Alive is another thing. I Those girls are. They're supposed to be of age, most of them, except for Marie Rose. But um, I think. I think if console holders, our platform holders, if they want to have sex in their games and the developers want to make it, then it'll it'll be. Um, it's I'm not different try- than movies, man. Like, there's so many. Like, you know, you have to balance. You can't have all action yeah. on this the narrative based. You know, there's people that want to play for this other reasons. You know, they want a love relationship story. They want like the characters have conflicts with you. You know what I mean? There's just more than the zombies in that game. I'm not trying to say that if your action game doesn't have underwear in it that i'm not gonna like it because near automata was so big you know um i'm not gonna say if you don't have boob physics i'm not gonna play your game i will play it you know uh you'll just be less satisfied (laughs) (laughs) i won't jack off to it but (laughs) i'll play it (laughs) boob physics are a must um but yeah, if if the develop what the developer wants, I'm cool with. I I back the developer. Whatever the developer think deems is right for their game, I will play their version of the game. If the platform holder wants to restrict them, that's when I get a little like, meh. Like that sucks. That sucks yeah. to be a, sucks to be a creator and have an external source tell you what to create. Yeah, I, guess, I mean you are working within. Um, their means and their platforms, but yeah, I hear you what are. you're saying. It's like a, yeah. it's a balance. You have to, if you're going to have an open platform, you should allow people to be open about it. But then, you know, the internet grew in size and there's just too many eyes, you know, that's the mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm. It's not so secluded anymore. It's like, just is mainstream. Sony, is Sony going to allow themselves to get canceled because a D3 publisher wants to put a rape game on their console, you know, like, Hey, Sony allowed this rape game on, 
yeah. their console. You know, like that. That's that's headlines. You know, is is Sony gonna risk it all for nope. a game that only ten thousand people will buy? You know, no, like they will no. not. <laughs> no, they won't. Um, but then the 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 fans suffer. The fans suffer because of it. And would I be one? Of, I would probably be one of those ten thousand people that bought that game. <laughs> but um, it sucks. It sucks. But I don't try and dwell on it. I think people consume themselves way too much with censorship. You guys just need to calm down. Just play a video game. You yeah, know, people. I mean, people get a little hyped. On, you know, people people do get a little hyped about things. Yeah. I think people just need to be more chill. You know, you gotta be yeah. more chill. You gotta there's respect. Plenty of games. There's plenty the of games to play. There. There's plenty of games. No, there's only one game. It's the one they've been waiting for for two Cyberpunk years. Cyberpunk 2077. And, <laughs> and it must be the best game ever or else or else we're uh, throwing a rampage. You know, we're, we're going on strike. Yeah. Um, last one. Shows on shows. Charity edition. You get it. There's a volunteer. Gamers. Uh, he wants to know if we're going to have any charity streams ever. And yeah, probably when we, when we, once we get enough, community the thing is is i don't want to have a charity stream and have no one show up like that is <laughs> that is the worst idea that will happen yeah happen. so so our plan is get big and then spread the joy as as big as we can we do have we do have ideas for the future but we really need to focus on growth right now and that's where we are um i watch i i, I donate to games done quick uh, every year and I, I watch that 24-7 when it airs so we're a part of the community but definitely we'll, we'll think of stuff we'll think of stuff that happens we got, a, we got a lot of road ahead of, ahead of us you know one step mm-hmm. at a time here mm-hmm. well thank you Todd B Mark do you have any comments that, that you're looking at no I don't actually because Todd B is the best freaking human mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. leaving us with very little work to do, you know, yeah. that's what Just I love making the show, creating it for us. Making it so easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's our show, I guess. So I guess. Thank you for listening and we'll, we'll see you next week. We will see you nerds. <laughs>